Benjamin Rush Malam was born on October 20th, 1788, to Moses Malam and Elizabeth Patty Malam in Frankfort, Kentucky. He was the fifth child of ten siblings and was raised on the remote frontier of the early United States and had little formal schooling. As a young man, he enlisted as a private in the 8th Regiment of the Kentucky Militia and was eventually commissioned as a lieutenant and fought for several months in the War of 1812. After finishing his service in the militia, he would return to Frankfurt and, at the age of 30, would travel to Spanish Texas after learning of the trading opportunities with the Native Americans there. While he was trading with Comanche Indians on the Colorado River, he met David G. Burnett, who, at the time, was living with the Indians in an attempt to recover from a case of tuberculosis, and the two would become good friends. Malam would later travel to New Orleans in 1819, where he met Jose Felix Tres Palacios and James Long, who intended to lead a filibustering expedition to free Texas from Spanish rule, and Malam decided to join the expedition in what became known as the Long Expedition. The expedition would capture Nacogdoches, and on June 22, 1819, they would declare the Second Texas Republic. However, the expedition would be met with some opposition. By July 16th, the Spanish consul in New Orleans had warned the Viceroy in Mexico City of the expedition, and within weeks, 500 Spanish troops arrived in Texas and marched on Nacogdoches, forcing the expeditionaries out of and to other parts of Texas. With help from Alam, James Long regrouped his forces near Galveston in December 1820 and the following year was ready for a second expedition. However, Long later broke with Malam, and the expedition led an uncertain existence until September 19, 1821, when Long and 52 men marched inland to capture Presidio La Bahia, but four days later, Long was forced to surrender by Spanish troops and was taken to Mexico City as a prisoner. Malam and Tres Palacios, who traveled to Veracruz and Mexico City, were imprisoned as well. While in prison, Long was mysteriously shot and killed by a guard, and Malam came to believe that the murder had been arranged by Tres Palacios. This incident drove Malam and some of his friends to plot to kill Tres Palacios, and when the plot was discovered, Malam was again imprisoned in Mexico City. They were released in the fall of 1822 with the help of Joel R. Poinsett and were returned to the United States on the sloop of war USS John Adams. By the spring of 1824, Malam had returned to Mexico, which was adopting a new Republican form of government established by the Constitution of 1824, and while there, Tres Palacios and Malam reconciled. Malam was granted Mexican citizenship and was commissioned as a colonel in the Mexican army. While living in Mexico City, he met Arthur G. Wavell, an Englishman who had become a general in the Mexican army, and between 1825 and 1826, they became partners in a silver mine in Nueva León and would also obtain Rosario grants in Texas. Wavell managed the mining in Mexico and leased the most productive mine to an English company, which, by 1828, was unable to fulfill the terms of their contract. In 1829, Malam sought to organize a new mining company in a partnership with David G. Burnett, but they were unable to raise enough money. Malam and Wavell's empresario efforts also failed when their contract was canceled by the Mexican government following the laws of April 6, 1830, which prohibited immigration from the United States to Texas. This was one reason why Malam and Wavell's agents for his Red River colony and Robert M. Wilson as agent of Malam's colony were not able to introduce the required number of settlers specified in their empresario contracts, which were due to expire in 1832. In 1835, Malam went to Monclova, the capital of Coahuila y Texas, to urge the new governor, Augustine Viesca, to send a land commissioner to Texas to provide settlers with their land titles, and Governor Viesca agreed to do this. However, before Malam could leave the city, word arrived that Mexican President Antonio López de Santa Ana had overthrown the Mexican government and established a dictatorship. Governor Viesca fled with Malam, but both were captured and imprisoned in Monterrey, Mexico. Malam eventually escaped the prison thanks to his sympathetic jailers and would head for the Texas border, which he reached in October 1835. By accident, he encountered a company of soldiers commanded by George Collinsworth, from whom he heard of the beginning of the Texas Revolution. Malam joined their ranks as a private and participated in the Battle of Goliad on October 10, 1835, and would later write, 
I assisted Texas to gain her independence. I have endured heat and cold, hunger and thirst. I have borne losses and suffered persecutions. I have been a tenant of every prison between this and Mexico, but the events of this night have compensated me for all my losses and all my sufferings. He then joined the main Texian army, commanded by Stephen F. Austin, in its attempt to expel all Mexican forces from Texas in the ongoing siege of Bayar. While returning from a scouting mission in the southwest on December 4, 1835, Malam learned that the majority of the army was considering to retreat into winter quarters instead of continuing with the planned attack on San Antonio. Due to the plummet in morale and supplies, the newly elected commander of the Texian army, Edward Burleson, and his council of officers were reluctant to attack the city, and the next day, at 3 p.m., Malam went to Burleson's tent to ask permission to call for volunteers to storm the city. Burleson had little choice but to go along with Malam's plan, because Malam was convinced that putting off the final assault on San Antonio would be a disaster for the cause of independence. Undaunted, Malam stalked into the Texian camp and then made his famous impassioned plea. Who will go with old Ben Malam to San Antonio? 300 men cheered their support for Malam and volunteered to attack San Antonio at dawn on December 5, 1835. Plans were quickly made for a two-column surprise attack. The volunteers would form at an abandoned mill at 3 a.m. while Burleson would hold the rest of the army in reserve. At the same time, James C. Neal would open fire on the Alamo, the center of the Mexican army's defensive position, with two cannons to distract the Mexican soldiers. Early on December 5th, Colonel Malam and Franklin W. Johnson each led a column of attackers into the heavily fortified city, where they eventually seized a foothold and entrenched their position overnight. On December 7th, the attack continued, and Malam's forces captured another foothold in the city. Standing with Johnson and Henry Cranes near the Veramandia house, Malam had been trying to observe the San Fernando church tower with a field telescope given to him by Stephen F. Austin when he was shot in the head by a Mexican rifleman and killed instantly. Malam's body fell into the arms of Samuel Maverick and Robert Morris was chosen to take over Malam's command of the 1st Division and after two more days of fighting, the siege ended on December 9th 1835, when General Martin Perfecto de Cos sent a subordinate to negotiate a truce with the Texians. Morris gave Cos and his troops six days to leave the Alamo. However, the Mexican wounded were allowed to remain behind to be treated by Texian doctors. Benjamin Rush Malam died on December 7, 1835, at the age of 47, just as the Texas Revolution was heating up. And even though he would never see Texas become a republic, Malam was widely honored in the years after his death and would be remembered as another great Texas revolutionary.